So cleansing and detoxing to me and giving up dairy are two of the most important things I can teach you. You may say, where am I going to get my calcium? And I already told you, the cow isn't drinking cat milk. You're going to get it from greens. You're going to get it from seaweed. There's so many other ways. The almond pate that we're going to serve you, the king of the nut world, tons of calcium and protein in that. There's so many ways to get usable calcium for your body. So someone will inevitably say, well, uh, you know, should I take calcium pills? Well, not necessarily because most people aren't even able to break down all the pills they're taking. You know, especially if the calcium pill sells dolomite in it, it just kind of binds in your system and it comes out in your urine if you're lucky. I say a lot of people have a lot of expensive urine out there, you know, which is why you need to detox so that your body can at least absorb whatever it is you've decided to do for yourself in terms of spot taking care of yourself. This is herbs and vitamins. It's spot taking, and we firmly believe in it. We sell herbs. We sell vitamins. I have experts on staff here that can help you with spot taking care of your body because it's certainly a way to begin. So you don't need calcium pills. You need more greens. And by the way, the way you end up with osteoporosis and these diseases is from too much caffeine and red meat that leaches the good calcium out of your body and your urine. So if you're a big caffeine drinker and a big meat eater, this is what's leaching the good calcium. I'll be 64. I have no worries of osteoporosis. My bones are strong. I have no worries of any of this. Okay, so um, how am I going to get my calcium? The same way the cow would, I would like to see, with greens, Okay, uh, the Bantu women of Africa, I've been told, have up to 10 babies in a lifetime. They breastfeed all of them. Osteoporosis is unheard of in the culture, and so is drinking secretions from cows or goats. All right, each animal, once you leave your mother's breast, you're not supposed to have breast milk. It's that simple. But they've got photographs with mustaches on presidents and movie stars, and you're being marketed into believing that you need cow secretions, and that's just what it is. And I don't care if you call it yogurt, butter, ice cream, um, cheese, w cream, 1%, 2%. I don't care what you call it. It is a secretion from a totally different species, intended for a totally different species. I mean, why not drink dog milk, you know, or leopard milk or something? You know, why not pick another animal to domesticate and feed them all this stuff? I mean, well, who's to say? But we've just decided this is the easiest way to go. And I guarantee you, you give up that cow secretions for one week, your body shape will start to change. Will the scale change? Not necessarily right away, but your body will just start to melt away. Because I was a vegetarian for about nine years before I became a vegan. Vegan is no dairy either. And my whole body shape changed once I gave up the dairy products. So you want to walk away from here today with one really powerful, potent thing to do for yourself. Give up the cow secretions for one week and you'll see that your body will just start to change. And don't start worrying, well, you know, if I'm going to give it up, where am I going to get my calcium? When you were eating your cheese and milk, you didn't say every day, where am I getting my calcium? <laughs> when you, were eating, you didn't start worrying about it when you were eating garbage, right? You didn't say, did I have my protein today and my calcium today? So when you come to this world, you don't have to sit and do tables. And your body will lead you. Your body will take you to where it's going. And how about Asia? They have ice cream now. When's the last time you saw dairy in an Asian culture? And there's billions of people. When's the last time you saw it? Until they come to this country and start putting on and start eating like us and feeling like us and everything else. And not doing the seaweed, which is a great way of calcium and keeping your hair black and dark because of the PABA, the B vitamins in it. I got all the answers to everything. No, I'm just joking. So, no, I'm just, I don't have the answers to everything, and which is why I say to you, it's so important for you to investigate. It's so important for you to learn what's right for you. I'm just like a catalyst to help you wake up and start to think and do something a little different. I have classes to help you wake up and start to think. But do I have all your answers? Absolutely not. Hopefully, I'm just an instrument and a catalyst that's been put here to help you wake up and start to think. So dairy, so leave here. Think about detoxing and cleansing. I have classes every other month here. I have a book coming out. I have it on DVD, but there are other people out there teaching also. Give, get rid of the dairy for a week or so, and you'll see you will feel totally different. And I know that a lot of you, and then the next thing I'm going to recommend is you might want to try giving up the dead animals for a short period of time, right? Uh, I don't believe for one minute that man was into uh, taken 
dead carcasses. I just don't believe it. I don't believe it's a natural human instinct to eat dead flesh. I think it's a learned experience. So you may ask me, well, why do you feel so strongly? Most of you, every so often I have somebody in class goes, well, I would, but I'm going to tell you, most of you, if you were on a desert island and you hadn't eaten in two weeks, and I had my dog with me and my cat with me, and the three of us had not eaten in two weeks, and there was a dead cow automatically appeared and a bushel of apples, where do you think your instincts would take you? Your instincts would take you to the bushel of apples. Maybe after a month or two, you might start gnawing on the cow too, or even your own arm or something. <laughs> But initially, your instincts would take you to the bushel of apples. My cat, and cats are true carnivores, and that's why so many of your cats are sick, because you're giving them uh, all kinds of, uh, I'll get done real quick. Uh, you're giving your uh, cats all kinds of uh, vegetables and fruit. They're carnivores. They're supposed to have only raw dead meat, I mean raw living meat. That's what cats are supposed to eat. So my cat would go directly to that cow and start chewing on him. My dog, who's an omnivore, would eat the cat and the dog, I mean, would eat the cow. <laughs> oh, you know what, here's an interesting story though. If you died and your cat was with you, your cat would eat you, your dog would starve to death. Interesting story, yes. So see, yeah, there was a reason for that. Anyway, yeah, my dog eats raw meat. So my dog, but he gets raw vegetables too. Because a, a dog is an omnivore. They eat fruits, and they eat vegetables, and raw meat. But you see, our instincts would take us to the apples first. That's your instincts. You have been programmed into believing you need these dead animals. And that's what's making you stink and get sick and tired and all these other things, all these dead animals that aren't going in and coming out and rotten and putrefying internally. So I'd like to see you all try giving up a week or two of dead animals, you know? Cooked. An animal that's been killed to eat. You'd be better off eating raw meat and raw fish than cooked. But you see how we've been so programmed, we don't even realize what a dead animal is anymore. That's uh, hamburgers, uh, chicken, uh, uh, anything with a mother. Anything with a, that had a face or a mother, or father. But you see, most of us don't even think of that anymore. We don't even realize that it had a life. So you talking about fish too? Yes. Eyes, face. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying that we weren't intended to ingest dead animals. Uh, there's certain animals that we're meant to, but we weren't. I don't believe it for a minute. And I'm living proof. I don't get sick. I don't get tired. I'm not angry. You know, I really believe that these children that are going and killing each other mm -hmm. and doing all these horrible things, you, when that animal is on that conveyor belt, belt going to his death, okay, his paws are tied up like this, and he's on the conveyor, and they're getting knocked in the head and their throat slit. They smell the death. They feel it. They smell the, they feel the, the, ang the anger and the fright and the flight is released in hormones in their body. And you eat that. You're probably programmed to handle it. But some of these kids are not programmed to handle it. And they have all this anxiety and anger and fear. From what? I have people that come in on massive dosages of um, what some of the drugs they do for making you happy all the time. Uh, I don't know what it is. People think they're supposed to be whatever it is, you know. And they just stop eating meat and they feel better. They lose their anxiety and their panic attacks because you're ingesting that. It's becoming a part of you. Some people are wired to handle it, but more and more people, younger and younger, are not. And they have no feeling. They have no humanity. They have no feeling of connection. So they're killing each other. And, and it's just horrible what's going on. And I think it starts with us in recreating our humanity. So to me, the best way to live is without having to kill anything. And by the way, I am not a true vegan, folks, because I wear leather. I'm still in my journey. I am far from perfect. I'm far from perfect. So I wear leather. So, but, you know, no, I do not wear fur, but I do wear leather. I gave up fur about 25 years ago. 30 years ago, but I don't wear, I, I'm still, and I've got all the Stella McCartney's shoes, you know, the vegan shoes and everything, but I'm just not ready to cross over, which is why I give you permission. You don't have to cross over. You find a way and a place to make yourself comfortable. Although I am getting closer to it, the more I read about things and the pain and things that the animals are going through, but I, I'm not there yet. So I'm not, and I do eat honey, and true vegans don't, but I'm in my journey. And I'm very comfortable because I know I'm co continually progressing and changing. All right, so I would love to see all of you give vegan vegetarianism a try. I'm going to give everybody a certificate today.
Oh, and by the way, I want to also mention, if you are so inclined, take a DVD home today. They're free. There's 17 minutes of testimonials of people who've done the detox class, and their testimonies are on here on how it worked for them. Now, I have to tell you, a group is leaving because this segment came as a group, and they've got a bus, but I'm going to talk for another 10 or 15 minutes, so I hope you all don't have to leave, but they are on a schedule, so they've got to get up and leave, okay? And thank you, ladies, for coming. Where's the group? We're going to take one second. I'm going to be, because you're going to get some free food. <laughs> Those who stay are going to get some free food. Can we get a supper? Uh, she's got stuff for you out there, I think. I'm almost done. Okay, ladies, I was hoping you'd be able to leave quietly so I could keep talking. Come on, ladies, quietly so I can keep talking. Please? Okay. All right, because people have to leave, so let me finish up. All right, so no dairy, cleansing and detoxing the body, minimum of four times a year is what's important. But what you've all probably, a lot of you have come to hear about is raw living foods. And that's what I am, a raw foodist. Raw foods are the way that God intended. Could you let the nurse know I'm going to be late? Every animal on the planet to eat is raw foods. That's the way God intended all animals to eat. Humans are the only animals that voluntarily cook their food. No other animal cooks their food except human beings. Oh, my dog reminded me. Or people who feed their animals cooked food. And guess what? They get the same diseases we do. Obesity, cancer, diabetes, arthritis, they get the exact same diseases that we get. They're like the canary in the mine telling us what's going to happen to us. So uh, dogs in the wild, in the jungle, don't have to have pet meds delivered to the jungle, right? Because <laughs> you can get the chemicals delivered to your house for your animals too now. Dogs, uh, animals in the wild aren't getting cancer and obesity and arthritis. They're dying from old age and eating each other up. But they're not dying from cooked food like you are. Literally cooked foods are acidic to the body, they're addictive to the body, and they're not feeding your cells. You have living cells that need living food. Does that sound right? Dead yes. food, you look and feel dead. Living food, you look and feel alive. It's that simple. Living cells need living food. It's so important. And how much of your food is living? Most people are in 10% live food, 90% cooked. Maybe a glass of orange juice in the morning and a salad at night, right? And that's your raw food for the day. It should be just the opposite. Maybe 10, 20% cooked food and 80% living food. 60, 40, 50, 50, but most of you are living, some of you and your children, on 100% cooked food. And the cells just can't live and re replicate that way. They need living food, living food for living cells. You don't need packaging for what God created for you to take in, to replicate yourself. It's all out there in nature. We've just gotten so far away from it that we've forgotten and we're used to eating all the other food, and that's why this restaurant was born. I have the first and longest standing raw food restaurant in the country. Thank you very much, Chicago. And my dog goes, woohoo! Thank you very much. He's proud of me, too. Um, and it wasn't because I was this big pioneer that thought, I did it for me. Everything I do for me, and I just share with you. I needed a place that I knew I was going to consistently eat raw foods, because the first seven years, I didn't even make a penny. I made no money whatsoever. But it was important to me for me to have this whole process of living foods. And as I did it more for me, the more people started to come. Well, actually, people started to come around after I was on Oprah. That's what kind of helped change the tone. And I was on again this year, by the way, but we haven't put it on the, uh, the DVD for you yet. But it'll get on there. Um, but, it, you know, it, it started to change. And now a lot of people are talking about living foods and raw foods. And, you know, you've got a lot. Even Charlie Trotter wrote a book on raw foods. He's in here all the time, he and his wife eating. So it is becoming more mainstream. It is becoming popular. But you've got to think of yourself eating more raw, raw, raw every day. Why do you need raw? You need raw for the enzymes. You need enzymes for every metabolic purpose in your body. When the enzymes are gone, that's when you die. It's that simple. 
Every time you sit down to a cooked meal of food, your body has to use its store of enzymes to break that food down.